It's Ricker and Vaughn, everybody, your favorite podcast. Hugest episode to ever come to you to date. We got Fed cuts. We got mortgage rates. Nike CEO. And a comprehensive review of new iOS 18 and macOS Sequoia. And if we have time, we're going to get into this Diddy news because, you know, that's the biggest thing on the ticket for today. So uh, keep it right here. The biggest Fed cut that has happened in a little bit, Bon Jen. Tell me everything you know about federal funds. Not a lot, but I do know <laughs> that. Everybody was wrong. Cuts, they wanted twenty-five. I do know that rate cuts are, or a rate cut has been, um, expected for a while now, on the condition well, that um, inflation cooled off. Apparently, right now it is lower than it was uh in pre-pandemic levels or at the same level so uh that's a good thing usa not turning into venezuela anytime soon um hopefully I, there's i, I want to put a pin in this but the sentiment of less than stellar as an overall arching pov for like stocks right now and like companies i'll get into that later but probably just because of growth but fed cut rates and first time for over four years, there's a little thing called the pandemic app. And you ever heard of it, dude? You ever heard oh, of COVID? Oh, yes. I lived Darn. it. I was on the battlefield. I was right there. I was listening to After Hours in my room uh, the day. It, it, he literally released it the day after, like, L.A. County did whatever they did. Bro so knew. Big weekend mode, big weekend mode. But I have a. I was longingly looking out in my lazy boy outside of the window into the LA cityscape, listening to a brand new album in a brand new world, some might say. That was the perfect age for like a pandemic to happen <laughs> for us. Cause we were like, what, 24, 25. We're not in high school. So like yeah. we can, we can do stuff. We're not in college. So we already had the college experience. We didn't miss out on shit. We had a little bit of party time after. Um, oh, we were two like, years. Yeah, we weren't like in our thirties, so like no kids, so it didn't really hurt that bad that we were unemployed. It either Fucking... like derailed my career trajectory and just what I do, or like the opposite of that. I can't tell right. that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what it did to me, but I had a blast. Like, <laughs> got a little TikTok fame, got a job out of it, flying <laughs> me everywhere. I was flush full of cash. I was doing fucking ads you know, for I did, thousands I did of dollars. I did do that too. Not doing the ads, but I was I was going out and about. Fuck, dude. The mortgage rates were as low as they have ever been. Ever didn't didn't uh, didn't get that, but you know, good yeah. fun to look back on. Fucking made a bunch of money, blew it all on a fucking bad business decision. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh learned a lot of course do? not i did not like i blew my 401k at a, as a 65 year old so right, not tripping too right. hard um yeah, but you didn't cash out all your doge on on two percent mortgage though fuck doge i made the real money on sheep that was but what i'm saying is uh someone a lot of people probably out there in 2020 just had seen just a little bit of a cycle before. I was saying that I was pretty new to anything financial and cyclical. And mm -hmm. some of these cats were just waiting for something to happen since like 08. And they saw just fake money go to the moon and back. Lowest mortgage ever. They bought some some rental properties, kicking it. And then and then watched everything go up for the next four years. My God, dude. I don't know, like, because I I would walk around the neighborhood looking at houses being, wouldn't it be nice? So I don't know why I didn't just pull a trigger. I don't even know if I had enough to put a down payment on a house in LA, even a small house. I um, but I like, <laughs> like I had like enough to like, I don't know, maybe buy a condo or something. <laughs> I did. Um, well, say it me. Yeah, but oh, that's well. what a lot of people are dealing with. They're talking about the uh, the old lock-in effect, where uh, people had some some low-ass mortgages and they don't want to sell because the I premium 
primo mortgage is a uh, is what they had, and they don't want to do anything different. So what do these rate cuts mean? Uh, is hiring going to pick back up again? Um, are Probably. startups going to raise more? <laughs> Are startups going to raise more cheap capital to fund Doge, I was, Dogecoin, I was, Land, Express? I was talking to a few people about um, anytime there's headlines of, you know, unemployment ticking up, I'm somehow caught in all of it. <laughs> I've been in the, the crappy crypto startups for basically my all. Oh, my yeah. How career. was that? I mean, cyclical. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Really? I was in a... Hey, I was in on the arm of a crypto division of a Classic. profitable company that has nothing <laughs> to do with crypto. So they were just experimenting. And I remember when they had those <laughs> quarterly meetings and this the words from the CEO's mouth came, we experienced our a loss this quarter. I started packing my bags because I know I knew who was supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. Seeing and the clients they, trickle out less. They've wiped every fucking <laughs> remnant of that project from the internet. You can't find it anywhere. Good like, on they them. didn't even keep it up for fucking sentimental reasons. They fucking cleared it. <laughs> but yeah, Good I don't them, know. Dude. Good business decision in retrospect. Probably a bad to like, start it up. Yeah, really dumb. And the That's lady that guess. like the lady that started it left like right after it launched to Ooh. another another crypto website and then she got dude. laid off <laughs> sick of them dude well the one she sick went to to her credit was like a fucking it's like a credible coin desk credible one they've been around for a i while. mean yes but it, the same things happen yeah it's it's all bad management it's all super dependent on free money from interest rates all super dependent on markets and i will go back to the first point of super not well-run businesses also it's like publishing if you were a blockchain developer in 2021 you could have comfortably asked for 300k <laughs> a year from a tech company <laughs> with a smile on your face with a smile and that would have been like low you had been like okay i got four <laughs> other offers for Just these fucking some these nft platforms like four things different than a, I don't even know. I, mean, I guess the language is all different, but yeah, bad, bad decisions from some CEOs. Uh, you know, some things go out of, out of cycle, out of, out of favor in, in people's eyes. Nike, I'm trying to think, um, kind of one of those. What do you think? There's anyone that survived from that era. Like Publications are like, no, Coinbase. like companies. <laughs> Like it's that work off fees that again are super cyclical and only happen if you have enough people or money, I suppose. Yeah, what the fuck were we thinking? Oh. <laughs> hey, yo, Bitcoin for life, baby. I just want to make that clear. Bitcoin for life, everything else. Like a solid ten percent, like a solid ten percent in there. Fuck everything uh, else that's not Bitcoin. You know, I, I I did I I told myself last cycle I'd put some risk on. I don't know if I brought this up before, but I was in there. I was in the Solana, whenever that popped up. I was in the base. You know, base Coinbase is base. Oh That's God! Some good meme coins. I told myself I put some risk on. Fuck well, Solana. <laughs> fuck a fuck fuck Ethereum. Fuck Cardano like like to hell. Yeah, you know. Fuck it all. Disgusting. Bitcoin Ugh. go up, baby. Bitcoin for life. Always, always all was day. that too. It was never. I mean, trading, but I didn't trade for crypto. The truth was right in front of us <laughs> the whole Bitcoin time. Is up. Bitcoin is not for trading. No, it's for uh, hoping that some other people value it higher in the future, like everything Bitcoin else. Bitcoin is for that accumulation, baby. Give it all to <laughs> me. I want it because the more I have, the less you do. Hey, listen, man. Let's get into this Nike. Oh yeah, let's tell me what's going on there, because I don't really know. Do you got Nikes on your feet or what? No, I'm rocking Adidas at the moment. I'm rocking Hocus. You're rocking Hocus. <laughs> no, I can't Which say I that I have. 
which is Deckers. Um, so Mikey, again, goes back to the, the sentiment of quote unquote, less than stellar is what I'm seeing lately. Everything's been a little less than stellar. Starbucks has been less than stellar. Chipotle, less than stellar. Check out the <laughs> Chipotle report. I'll post it on Rick and Bond. One, two, new Chipotle. You know, Are you talking see about like their, their stock price or their profitability or their product? More sentiment. Um, I could look at the charts, but just the, the experience as a user. I don't um, know what the fuck happened to Chipotle, man. It's like... <laughs> we're really we're really being on Chipotle. This four is the out second of five Chipotle times, episode. it's just... Yeah, it's just like... Not that good I, I Okay, but I have never experienced that. It's always been good. The stock is dollar sign CMG and it's going low slow for me. Uh, Chipotle's never been bad in my eyes. Not yeah, but you ever go experience. and it's just like, oh, the fucking chicken's cold. Like no. everything's just cold and hard. Like you never like gotten like Absolutely the tail not. end of the chicken portion. Nope. Because now it seems like, especially the one downtown, it seems like that's that's the case more and more. Well, stocks pretty dang high. It has a pretty big drawdown. But have you ever um, been to Kava? Not yet. It's Public pretty guy. good. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, Kava Group is a pretty nice chart. Pretty nice Around chart. Kava. 2023, usually you see those IPOs go up and then down. I'll give you maybe two years to see how you're doing, but... Um, I think you should try so, it. I'll try it on my trip. We can, I know <laughs> they, they got one in day. San Diego. They're kind of fucking... There's not really one downtown. Like, <laughs> like we got to make sure to Pasadena. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, yeah like it's, kind of a, it's kind Anyways. of a drive. Companies, uh, maybe not as far as their stocks, a couple of them. I think Nike is indeed one of those that has been bad, less than stellar in the in the chart wise. But CEO ousted from Nike. New CEO is Elliot Hill. What a name. Super CEO y name. He is uh, succeeding John Donahue. Uh, Mr. Donahue's on as an advisor still. Nike stock just Absolutely halved. It looks like a really slow cryptocurrency. More like a what mountain is, and not the classic guillotine chart. Uh, where is his new CEO? What what is his previous work? He's he's a he's a Nike alum. He's a, a former Nike executive. So they're getting ah, some, internal some old hire. blood. I don't know if he was an internal or former. I, I believe former Nike. Somewhat internal, but not really. More like a Starbucks. Um, so you tell me after hours. what's wrong with Nike? Why? Why is it stock halved? Brand know. issue, well, poor quality product. Let's hear it. Uh, one, revenue growth slowing. Two, bad direct consumer. Uh, their DTC sales dropped by eight percent in the quarter, bringing in mm -hmm. uh, five point one million. Nike's revenue fell two percent in Q four. Uh, missed estimates and everybody know that wall street loves uh anticipation and if you don't anticipate good enough it's no bueno uh, you know i seem company. to recall an analyst saying that nike messed up on their retail department because they tried to make the only way you can buy nike stuff from nike stores for a while so they pulled all their stuff from other stores and that just fucked them Sure. Maybe, but now they like reversed. They reverse course, hurt. and now you can buy them other places. But mm. I don't like really go out looking for Nike stuff. But I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because you know, there's not that many not Nike. Nike stores. I don't know if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, there's like um, maybe one or two in LA, or three. So revenue declined. They uh, they. Still beat on earnings per share, 0.99 versus a forecast of 0.66, which is pretty good. Um, and then there's just a bunch of other shoes that are competing. You see uh, uh, the eye test, a lot of people wearing Hoka's, which is Decker's. A lot of people wearing New Balance or, or running shoes. I think running Birkenstock, 
pretty sure public IPA pretty sure crazy a bit. yeah Birkenstock has been around since like 1841 yeah they old as fuck <laughs> anyway so new CEO um, going back to the theme of everything's doing a little less than stellar besides a few things uh, besides maybe not tech showing up holding in the charts everything but up yeah and everyone is saying oh tech freaking interest rates down go to mid cap screw you dude F off go to those juicy juicy index funds Stay in VLO, new all time high. I don't I don't pick stocks I just let's get the funds just Big old tech and the big old fund. I seem That's to what be I like. wrong more than I'm right in stock picking so I just leave it to <laughs> the winners so we have an option here. We could either talk about some more CEO drama or Diddy drama. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, what's the other CEO we're talking about? It is kind of funny. Uh, I don't know much about the company, but it's a, it's a company called OpenWeb. It's a startup. They help publishers engage with users somehow. Uh, the company announced a new CEO, and then the co-founding CEO was like, no, this isn't true and has never been true. I'm still CEO. See you guys in office. <laughs> That sounds good. That sounds like something an employee there would be confident in. <laughs> they don't even know who the CEO is. Yeah, for real. So the uh, the new guy was Tim Harvey. Harvey sent an email to employees uh, thanking the former CEO for his incredible passion, quote unquote, and confirming uh, the leadership transition. And then after that, you know, you're doing your work, coding probably, D D D D D, coding at a startup. Oh, new CEO. I mean, okay. And then twelve minutes later, the founding CEO is like, "No, that's actually false. I'm not stepping out." Stuck a wean. I'm staying, maybe. Maybe he was Founding ousted body. without his knowledge. You know, Chauveau did Sam accuse the board. Breach Sam of contract. Altman found out he was fired on Twitter. That lasted not long. Yeah, that was that was the biggest mess. Imagine if we had been on, been on air during that time. I think I did post something on the Instagram. That was fucking Because crazy. when he when he came back. Uh, this this open web company deleted founding CEO's profile from the page. They raised Oh around no. four hundred million from investors. Last value at one point five billion. Internal leadership conflict raised confer concerns for investors. I would be a little bit concerned too if I was an investor, or I would Maybe be like, dude, the CEO cares. maybe <laughs> the old CEO Probably not. was fucking around too much, and so they said this guy got to go. F around and find out. Yeah. All right, Um, so yeah. we could either talk about Apple or talk about Diddy. We gotta <laughs> talk Apple. okay. We just gotta. We Go just for it. Diddy's going to prison for life, but there's only one iOS <laughs> 18. That's true. Diddy didn't code any of it. Uh, no, no, he was <laughs> just an advisor, actually. right. All that Yeah. equity. Yes. iOS 18 was just released. as well as the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro, there is not a single thing, not, I don't want to say a single thing, but 90% of the things software-wise that um, Apple announced on stage or in their video is not being shipped with this phone on day one. Everything that's exciting is coming out in a few months. New Siri, not out. Apple intelligence not out. A bunch of camera features not out. Um, what gives Apple? I know they kind of just announced their partnership with um, OpenAI and all this AI stuff, but Mm-hmm. no one would have like really been like, "Oh, bad on you for like waiting until December to unleash uh, um, release a finished product." But they probably couldn't do that because you know. holidays and shit and they want to like have this shit like already rolled out before then but still like there's literally no physical Nothing that they random announced that's on the phones. well besides like ios 18 features which they announced back in june but Mm the selling point for the new iphone is apple intelligence and -hmm. Mm that's not coming out for a couple months 
unfortunately. That's actually preventing me from making the purchase. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So maybe people and... that maybe they might see even less buys or upgrades than they would if there's a, a phone without AI because they know AI is coming. Not only that, Apple just stopped selling last year's model to yeah. try to get people Wild. to buy the new one. Um, now these things are so identical that like the, like you wouldn't be able to tell what kind of phone it is unless you like look in the settings. Um, like everything is the same besides the colors, maybe a bigger bezel, but better camera for sure. But you know, the average person doesn't really like notice the camera bump unless they're going from like three or four generations prior. Yeah. Interesting stuff. There's a, um, um, someone sent me, uh, they might've been upgrading a phone and I sent you the picture. Look at all these different Apple devices and prices people have to think of about trading. There's an iPhone 16, iPhone 16 plus, iPhone 16 Pro, iPhone 16 Pro Max, and then mm -hmm. a bunch of other options with different uh, storage. Is there too many products perhaps? Um, okay, so these are all the same pro. I see what you're saying. These are all the same product, but just different sizes. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I don't know, because I feel like every person wants like something different. Like some people really hate the big phone and some people really hate the small phone. And some people don't care about like a pro version. And some people are like, oh, I need that extra camera power or I need the latest chip. So I don't really know how you could offer less um, unless you just like. Is it all hardware? The different the changes? Yeah, it's all hardware. Now, there are some software differences, but that's just because the hardware can, the newer hardware can handle the newer software. But yeah, I don't know. And it's, all, it's also because um, you said last episode that the average time people upgrade About their phones years. is five years. Yeah. But, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not like if I was Tim Cook, I wouldn't be scared or anything because, you know, they can just make up the difference by lot like because doing their services because like everybody is fucking paying at least ten dollars a month every month for some apple service whether it's apple music or fucking news or apple arcade or fucking apple care which is huge or um icloud which is huge um they make a shit ton of money from that um if they need cash all they needed to do is raise each the price of each of those services by like a dollar or two and people would bitch and complain for a day but they're not going to cancel you're not going to cancel yeah. your fucking iCloud because all your <laughs> memories are on there for the last from the last 10 years so then you like, can't see them in vision goggles yeah so like you're gonna low-key re-record re if fucking investors are giving tim cook shit Hey man, how come the Vision Pro isn't selling like you thought it would? Hey man, how come people aren't buying iPhones every year like they used to? You just be like, "Yo, motherfucker, shut the fuck up! Look at these <laughs> services. Like, who cares that I spent twenty billion on Apple TV Plus and we only have five subscribers? Like, Apple I'm sure music Cook, is Cook, killing it. Cook has a deck that said that says STFU. Look at these services. I mean, services was always kind of the biggest thing. Yeah, like recurring and or monthly yeah and apple doesn't even have to charge for ios 18 or mac os when they used to they used to charge for those upgrades but now they make so much money from other shit especially the oh we didn't even talk about the credit cards that might think might be happening but some switching from gold into chase yeah that's huge because that's uh i forgot the number it was like something 27 billion dollars or something um and debt that apple or consumer debt that apple has that they would uh that goldman has that they would transfer over to chase yeah and that credit card is it doesn't have the best fucking rewards by far but it is by far the best like user experience from the app perspective 
it was like you'll be paying it and it'll be like oh you just paid off all of the food you ate in june 2024 <laughs> would you like to pay 20 dollars more so that you can pay off your gas and i'm just like whoa dude like other fucking credit card app or apps are so fucking cumbersome and cluttered like apple got it right so they should really um be with the best uh bank for show Let's see what happens with the apple intelligence and if growth and sentiment uh, stops to stops waning i'm bullish on it i'm bullish once they push it to like other shit like fucking apple carplay um i do believe that this i hope and i pre I, I believe that it would be a pretty good product because if you got a, G, a gpt that can like if i can talk to siri better just a little bit like 15 percent better mm -hmm. pretty nice Notes. it has the potential i think besides them renting out the search bar to google for 20 billion a year i think it does have the potential to be one of the most profitable products that they make simply because it's will be so powerful and they won't be paying for any of the compute it will all be fucking microsoft doing it or amazon or whoever they partner with they just make it look pretty give it Apple to the billion sourcing yeah give it to the billion richest consumers in the world iphone users <laughs> and chat gbt is going to be like okay i need more of this crack that you're giving me um, <laughs> Name a price and I'll write a check. And then I'll just ask Daddy Microsoft to write it up. Big, big Windows, Big Foursquare. Foursquare is a different company. All righty, dude. Let's wrap All it up. A little LA sesh. Um, Rick and Bob, thanks for listening. See you next time in a different location. Yes, sir.